Okay, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. I'd like to welcome everybody who's joining us for today's presentation. If you're in the United States, it's during uh, your lunchtime, so I hope you're taking advantage of that and uh, watching the presentation and eating a sandwich or a salad or whatever you're having for lunch. Today, we have the next installment of the Blue Sky Bio 2017 webinar series. We've had a fantastic <coughs> series so far. Great speakers, very interesting topics. Recordings are available via the Blue Sky Bio website or via YouTube. As usual, if you have questions during the presentation, please enter them in the chat box next to the video screen. And in that chat box, there's a link to complete the webinar attendance form to receive your CE credit. The CE credit will be sent via email, usually within a week or so after the presentation. Today we have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Amos Yahav. He's going to be discussing advanced augmentation solutions by using bone graft cements. Dr. Yahav is currently the CEO of Augma Biomaterials. He established a private clinic practice in 1993 in Netanya, Israel, limited to implants, oral, oral rehabilitation, and aesthetic dentistry. He serves as a guest and keynote speaker at international conferences and professional workshops worldwide and has lectured on several different continents. Dr. Yav? Yes, Michael. <clears throat> Go ahead. First, uh, Michael, thank you very much for uh, having me in your show. And of course, thank you all for joining me to this uh, webinar. Uh, today, I would like to speak about advanced augmentation solutions by using uh, bone graft cement. So I will start with every once in a while, there is a revolutionary invention come along. An invention that changed almost everything. It changed our habits, our abilities, our state of mind. And of course, from that moment on, almost nothing is the same as we did it before. That's why we call it a game changer. I don't know why. Sorry, I don't know why it's that's not moving. My computer got stuck just in that moment. Okay, sorry. And the most powerful ones are those who are based on the very old statement of Leonardo da Vinci, which said, that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. I have some problems with my computer, unfortunately. It was working up until now, and I don't know why now not. Just a second, I need to close it and open it again, with your permission. So let me ask you, how many of you would imagine themselves lighting a fire in that primitive and cumbersome way when you have matches in your hands? Probably a few years down the line, very few of you would think even that they will try to make augmentation by working with granules on membrane as we do today when you will work with cement in your hands. <clears throat> so today I'm going to introduce to you two types of cements. Both of them are based on the innovative product, which is based on biphasic calcium sulfate cement. One is the pure biphasic calcium matrix, 
and the other is a combination of biphasic calcium sulfate together with HA particles. Those products are different in their space maintaining ability. And I'm sure that until the end of my lecture, each one of you will know exactly when to work with which one of them in which indication. So the question is why cements? Because since the concrete has been found, all of the construction field have been changed because it expands our possibility and simplify the way that we do things. The same happened in the orthopedic field. Almost everything now is with cement in the orthopedic field. But in our field, up until now, we didn't have it. And now I'm very happy to introduce to you bone graft cement that can do our work the same easy as it should be. So what's wrong with the existing solutions? We know that for many years, many decades, we are already working with blocks, granules, patties in order to improve the handling. Those patties, by the way, can be those that we purchase or those that we prefer, uh, made by ourselves. If we work with blocks, of course, it's difficult. We need to shape it. We need a high skill. We need to stabilize it in place. Granules are also, it's difficult to stabilize them in place. Always we need a membrane. Even if we work with patties, it's still, uh, we need a membrane to work. And in the end, we might have some uh, relatively uh, volumetric result, reasonable one. But we need to ask ourselves, are we going to every generation or repair? Because if we speak about granules, any types of granules or other products that exist in the market, we are speaking about integration. And as soon as we say integration, we mean that there is not going to be a complete regeneration there. It's going to be some kind of repair. So here you can see, for example, this core was harvested for a graft that was used by non-resorbable granules. You can see that 80% of the grafted site is a non-vital bone. However, on the other hand, we can see a core that was harvested after using the biphasic calcium sulfate, which transformed simultaneously into the patient on bone, and we can see that it transformed into 100% patient on bone, which means 100% of regeneration. The problem is that if we choose a material that resorbs simultaneously with the bone formation, it is a short-term space maintainer. Therefore, its indications are very limited to small defects, which are surrounded by at least three bony walls, such as socket grafting from first central until second premolar or molar with a septum. If we want to work with such kind of material in a larger defect, then we need to create a composite graft. Then we need to mix a short maintainer matrix together with a long maintainer matrix. And then we will gain a composite graft, which is much better than the granules by themselves. There are two matrices, one that resolve a little bit faster and enable the bone to form. And the other is a longer space maintainer that just help us to preserve the three-dimensional space for a longer period. In this illustration, for example, you can see that when we work with granules, the only space for the bone to be formed is in between those tiny voids. Therefore, we have been taught not to condense our granules because if we will condense them, even after six months at the reopening, we might find some detached granules. <clears throat> and that's why, because the quantity of the vital bone is very minimum, it's about 20%, 20, 25% outmost, so then we need to wait at least six months until we have a solid mass that we can place all of our implants. So always there will be those who will say, why should I care as long as it works? And true, it works. I think it's similar to those who will say, why should I care as long as I sleep? Because you can sleep in the pavement, you can sleep in this hotel or in this fancy hotel. I think when you have the possibility to sleep in this hotel, in the fancy one, and you still prefer to sleep on the pavement, I think it looks weird. So let me summarize the drawbacks of the existing materials that exist up until now. They are difficult to stabilize and to work with. They prolong our chair time. The amount of bone that we have as an outcome is a limited amount of vital bone. Therefore, it's prolonged the healing period. Membrane coverage is always required. And of course, it's increased our costs. So necessity 
is the mother of inventions. That's why we invented for you, after more than 15 years of development, a specific bone graft cement that will be suitable to the dental field. Now, we need to remember, cement, it's a different concept. So if you want to embrace this concept, first thing that you need to do is to get out of your uh, granular state of mind. And you need, you need to take two decisions which are very similar to those that you took when you decided to have your driving license. First, I understand the benefits and I want. And second, I'm not quitting after my second lesson. Because there is a learning curve. Short one, but exist. But exist. However, once you will overcome this learning curve, you can enjoy from the tremendous advantages of bone cement, which I'm going to show you in this presentation. <clears throat> this video will demonstrate perfectly what I meant. I think a video is better than a thousand words. First, as you can see, the cement is coming in a very smart syringe that you push and the liquid come inside and mix the cement for you. The only thing that you need to do is to eject the material into the site, press it for three seconds, and you're done. Now you can close the flap. If you need to add, you can add another layer. Always slightly overfill in order to compensate for shrinkage. There is about 10 to 15% shrinkage, so always try to uh, overfill. Now, the flap should be primary closed, but not tension free. It should be with a moderate tension. It's completely different than what we are used with granules and membranes. Then, there we are asking, uh, we want that it will be a tension free. Here, not. We want a moderate, moderate tension. Now, nearby, you can see the, that the case was treated by granules. So, of course, membrane is required always. And the granules must be mixed with something. And as you can see, it's a very slow and cumbersome procedure. Indeed, we are used to do it, but still, it's not elegant, very slow, and relatively very primitive way to do the things. Now, of course, we showed in the movie, because if not, we must stay a few, a few minutes more. Now, I want to show you the outcome because it's not enough that it will be easy for us. We need to see also the results. Three months post-op. That's how it looks. This is the cement area. This is the granules area. This is the huge bulk of vital bone that was built in the cement area. And here in the granules area, during, uh, due to their movements, we see that we lost some volume. So definitely, it's a very impressive result. Now, the question was, which type of cement? Because when I, uh, when I wanted to find something else, which will be completely different than the granules and the blocks and the patties that we're working today, I knew that cement is going to be the, the, the answer. And I went into the literature and I find two types of cement. One is calcium phosphate cement that since 1982, it was implemented in the orthopedic field and there is a huge shift to cement in the orthopedic field because it's much easier and much convenient to work with. The other one that was, but it's not suitable for us because we have a different requirements. The other one that was suitable was calcium sulfate cement. First, it was used by Driesmann in uh, 1892, more than 120 years ago. He closed the gaps of tuberculosis, and there are thousands of articles about uh, this material from all different kinds and fields, from the orthopedic field, oncologic field, plastic surgery, and of course, max maxillofacial. So I know that it's very well scientifically based. Now, when I quote some of the sentences in those articles, it shows that it's extremely biocompatible material and non-toxic, and of course, the outcome, and you might see it in many of those articles, is identical to autogenous bone graft, which is our gold standard, because the material is transformed completely into the patient on bone. And also the resorption profile of calcium sulfate match the rate in which the host environment can lay down bone. It means that simultaneously it's replaced with the new bone formation. And of course, 
the material is bioactive because it has the ability to promote the differentiation of the pluripotential stem cells into osteoblasts due to the large presence of calcium uh, of ion calcium now here we are not talking about integration at all like with the others here we are talking about biological process when you place the material in place the only time that it come in contact with the bone is during its placement immediately start is the solution a release of tons of ions of calcium which start to precipitate in the form of ha lattice work of the bone ha in calcium phosphate lattice work of the bone and then of course the presence of calcium ion encourages the differentiation of the pluripotential stem cells into osteoblasts those come secrete the collagen and vice versa so actually here we have a biological process that's why this material is called a bioactive material okay and we need to understand as well that all of the radiographic appearance is completely different than what we are used to see because when we use granules that does not resolve or resolve very slowly or stay for a long period we see it radio pack in the first day after one week after one month three months always we see it so when we see it radio pack it means that nothing changed there here instead what you see in the first day it's radio pack after one week you see radiolucency on the border two weeks more radiolucency three weeks everything is disappeared now those of you who are not familiar with this phenomenon might think that you lost the graft but actually this is the osteoid before calcification if you keep on waiting until the 12 weeks then you're going to see the same trabecular form and the same calcification of the bone of the native bone so this shows you exactly the transformation of the material into the patient on bone so <clears throat> what surprised me that i saw all of those advantages that exist in this material like it's self-reinforced it's extremely biocompatible cementable material biodegradable which is totally replaced by, by bone it's compatible with other augmentation medicaments growth factors excellent hemostatic material and one thing which is very very uh, important for us during exposure almost it's never get contaminated it's as bacteriostatic nature and soft tissue know how to proliferate very quickly above its surface so it's a very big advantage for us in case of exposure indeed if we will have a big exposure we might lose some volume but almost never you will have contamination due to exposure and of course it's not identical uh, it's not expensive material and as i said in the literature it says that it has identical outcome as autogenous bone graft so if it has all of those advantages why it was not popular because it had it has two disadvantages that up until the last time nobody could resolve them first calcium sulfate as you know it's a plaster of paris you mix it with water it's get hard about 20 minutes it's set and it's get hard however when it comes in contact with blood or saliva the setting cannot take place because in between the crystals the blood contaminate the crystals and they cannot adhere one to each other so actually even after 200 minutes the material does not get hard so if it cannot get hard so the resorption is extremely fast and unpredictable so if you wanted to use with the old calcium sulfate you should place a layer first absorb the the blood place a layer wait place another one so it's it's not feasible it's very difficult to work with even so that it has all of those advantages so some company said let's make the setting outside in the planet and then grind it into pellets for the orthopedic for example or into granules for the dental field now they find something very interesting that the material is much more stable its resorption it's much more predictable and it's equivalent to the time that the bone that takes the bone to build itself it means that the resorption it's simultaneously with the bone formation which is amazing because it's less disturbing to the less dis disturbing to the healing the point is that this is not cement so it's much more difficult to work then we need membranes and it's like every other grounds <clears throat> some company try 
to put some polymers. So if you put polymers, it's a different material and does not behave the same. Some use additives. Even so, with the additive and accelerator, it could not set in the presence of blood and saliva. Indeed, it's improved a little bit, but still, it could not set. So after 15 years of development, and the insistence was not to add nothing to the pure formulation of calcium sulfate. That's why it took me about 15 years of development. We developed the biphasic calcium sulfate. The biphasic calcium sulfate is the only calcium sulfate in the world that can set instantly in the presence of blood and saliva. How can it do so? Because most of the material is already after setting and still has it, its surface places which behave like hemihydrate. That's why it behaves like a cement as well. And in the other end is a very stable material. And of course, it's a patent. So, we have two products that based on the biphasic calcium sulfate. First is the blue box, which is the 3D bond, and the other is the red box, which is the bond appetite. Let's start with the first one, with the blue box. Well, I place this beautiful car here just to make the analogy to what happened. This beautiful car has the most highest performance but it cannot be off-road. It could not go even on the pavement. That's exactly what happened with the 3D bond. You're going to have 100% the patient on bone in three months. Everything is going to transform into the patient on bone. You can see it in the histology. You can see it on the micro CT. And in the histology, you're going to see the osteocyte inside and there are no particles. Nothing is remained there. But it must be stricted to the indication. And what are the indications? It can be used by itself as a socket preservation for, from first central until second premolar or molar in, in, with a septum. Why molar is with a septum? Because when you have a septum, it's like two premolar. It's a small defect which are surrounded by at least three bony walls. Again, even if you don't have a buccal plate, this is fine. With those indications, you're going to have a great result. Now, one thing is very important when you do socket grafting with cements. You eject the cement into the site, take a dry gauze, press above for three seconds, but don't use any tool to try to push the cement into the bottom of the socket as you do with granules. Because if you will do so, the patient after one or two days will start to experience discomfort due to the expansion of the cement. So the only thing that you need to do is push the material, uh, eject the material into the site, press it firmly for three seconds, and then protect it with a collagen uh, sponge or membrane or whatever. There is a beautiful uh, end-on video, which you can find us, uh, you can find it in our uh, YouTube site, just write Augma Bio and uh, write 3D Bone by itself, end-on. And you can see exactly how to work with it. Now, another option is to work with the material as a composite graft, and that's for a larger defect. As a composite graft is when you like to do your own cocktail by yourself. So there are also nice techniques which you can find them at uh, YouTube. <clears throat> another option is to use it as a barrier, but I'm not going to stay on it because I don't think that there is any need to work with granules when you have cements in your hands. So this case, for example, you can see a socket grafting. And after a few months, a core was harvested for histology. And you can see beautiful, dense lamellar bone. And you can see the osteocyte, which reflect that this is vital. Because when we work with allograft, it's integrated very nicely. But the particles of allograft, of allograft, even after three months, six months, even nine months, you will never find osteocyte within them, which means that actually this is a dead bone. This is a sequestrum. So here, everything is transformed into the patient on bone. Radiographic appearance, first day, as you can see, it's radio opaque. After two, three weeks, almost everything is gone here. Everything becomes radiolucent. Those of you who are not familiar will be sure that you lost the graph, but this is the osteoid before calcification. Wait a little bit, and up to three months, you see exactly the same trabecular form of the bone. And by the way, most of the time, it's even better calcified 
than uh, the former bone, unless the bone is, uh, is uh, very older. This case, for example, within the indication, socket grafting, but we don't have the buccal plate. We eject the material into the site, press it firmly. The blood will come instantly due to the internal structure of the cement. Don't be afraid to press. No matter how much you're going to press, the blood will come inside. You cannot block the microporosity of the, of the material due to its crystallization. And of course, three months later, you can see this is the patient on bone, 100% patient on bone. Another advantage is using this material to control bleeding. Here in this case, as you can see, I had an arterial bleeding during my surgery. So the only thing that I need to do is to eject the material to the, to side, to the site, press it firmly for three seconds, and that's all, and close the flap. Three months later, you can see the bone that was formed, and at the re-entry, this is the bone. 100% patient on bone. Cannot be better. That's how it was before, and that's how it's after three months. Now, in this video, you will see also the other side of this, uh, of this patient. You can see the abundant bleeding. <clears throat> and in a few seconds, you're going to see the splash of the artery on the finger of my assistant. Take a look. See? Now, we take the 3D bond, we eject it into the site, take a dry gauze, press firmly, and it stops the bleeding instantly. By the way, you can stop bleeding also in the soft tissue and also in the hard tissue, and you do it exactly the same. You see? The arterial bleeding stop. Now I continue with the augmentation. Now, if you have such bleeding, if you have experience, it's time consuming. If you don't have experience, it's very frightening because it does not stop simultaneously. It does not stop by itself. Spontaneously. Now, when you end the procedure, it's important to close the soft tissue. Primary close, but not tension-free. It should be with a moderate tension. Don't release too much the flap. Three months later, you can see the uh, soft tissue appearance, radiographic appearance, and at the re-entry, 100% patient on bone. Like the Bugatti, best performance, but it must be on road. Now, our Jeep on-road and off-road car is a composite graft. Why? Because here we use two types of matrices. One, the biphasic calcium sulfate, which induce the bone to be formed, and the other is the particles of HA as a stupid space maintainer that only need to slow down the overall, the overall resorption. And because the proportion is 66.6 biphasic calcium sulfate, 33.3 HA particles, in a control particle size distribution. And why? Because we use particles from different sizes and different shapes, from 90 micron to one millimeter, because we wanted the hydroxyapatite will resolve as well. We have been taught that hydroxyapatite, especially high density hydroxyapatite, is not supposed to resolve. But it's not true, unless you give him the condition. And if you play with the particle size and its, and its shapes and forms, the small, Medium-sized particles after four, six months are already not there. The only one that going to, to left there after one and two years are the big particles, which are less than 10% in the overall mass. So it's most, most of the area is transferring to the patient on bone very quickly. That's why in three months you can place or load your implant. Now, those of you who are afraid that the blood will not go uh, will not penetrate inside. You can see the micro and macro structures of the material. You can see the micropore for 1 to 50 micron, which enable growth factor infiltration rapidly. And the other is the macropore, which enable cell proliferation and angiogenesis formation. And don't forget that those resorb as well. 
and a liberate place to the bone to be formed. And of course, during the dissolution, <coughs> there is a formation of a lattice work of the uh, HA and calcium phosphate of the bone. And other things that we provide you, this very smart syringe. This syringe include the liquid and include the cement. And you will see that when you push the shaft, the liquid is coming down into the cement chamber. It's mixed with the cement. All of the uh, liquid surpluses are going back into the syringe. And you will have always exactly the same viscosity, which is very important when we work with cements. Now the technique, the technique is extremely simple. As my daughter show here, it shows place, press, and close. Remember, that's all what you need to remember. And you must perform it exactly simple as we show it. All the mistakes happen is when you try to treat cement as you treat granules. The only thing that you need to do is to eject the material into the side from its syringe, press it firmly for three seconds, not five minutes, not six minutes, not 10 minutes, three seconds, that's all, and close your flap. And again, when you release the flap, it should be enough to close the area, but not too much released, not tension free. It should be with a moderate tension. Now, if you get, if you got one or two millimeter exposure, this is not an issue. Soft tissue will, uh, will, close, will close about the graph very, very quickly, but not more than this, because if you leave it five or four or six millimeters, then you might lose some volume. And that is the outcome. Three months post-op, you don't need more. That's how it was before. That's how it looks after 12 weeks. Let me show you in this video how simple is to treat even complex procedures. This case was treated by uh, implant and uh, conventional augmentation with granules. And in this case, unfortunately, it failed. Of course, it does not say that any granules fails, but in this case, it fails. So first things, we need to uh, make a complete debridement, remove all of the soft tissue and gum in direct contact with the bone. <clears throat> you see that there is no buccal plate as well. Now, the release of soft tissue, as I mentioned, at the base of the flap, and you see that the flap is with moderate tension. We don't want to connect the flap with the muscle because then it will be too flappy and we lose volume. This is the bone the appetite syringe. You push the shaft until the first piston reach the blue line. Then eject, uh, remove the head and eject the material directly into the site. Now, don't try to mold it now. Just take a dry gauze, press firmly for three seconds, and you're done. You can close the flap. That's all. It's looked too good to be true, but it is. It must be simple like that. You see, even here, you see that it's a little bit open. This is not an issue. Now, three months post-op, that's how it looks, the soft tissue. And at the re-entry, you see the bone that was formed, and it is, is the patient's own bone. Very simple. No membrane was used. Less than a minute, the entire graft placement and stabilization. Figure out how much time it's going to save you and what a better result you have. Indeed, there is a small learning curve, but if you do it simple as we show you, this learning curve is one, maximum one or two cases, and then you know you can master the technique. And you can see that the implant is very well stabilized in place. And of course, the torque is very well. Now, radiographic appearance. <clears throat> also here, because we have two matrices, one is the HA, which resolves uh, more slowly, and the other is the biphasic calcium sulfate. First day, as you can see here, it's radiopac. After four weeks, for those of you who are not familiar with this phenomenon, you will be sure that you lost everything and it looks catastrophic. It looks disaster. But actually what you see here is the transformation into the osteoid 
and here and there you can see the white spot which reflect the HA particles. Now, six weeks later, you see the deficiency, but actually this is the transformation into the patient on bone. 14 weeks later, everything is filled by the patient on bone, and we can see it as well at the CT scan. You can see it here. Everything was built by the patient on bone. Here and there, we might find some small granules that still remain, but they will uh, disappear as well with time. Is it really bone? We need to take some histology. This is a fracture root. I've used the bone appetite. Again, when I close the flap, as you can see, it's a little bit open. I don't keep it more because it's with a moderate tension. One or two millimeters, it's not an issue. Three months later, you can see the quality of bone, bleeding vital bone, and you can see here and there the particle of HA, and it looks like somebody shaved them because they resolve as well. The small one and middle one will resolve in four to six, uh, six uh, months. We took a core for histology, and it's a bleeding vital core, and here you can see the huge amount of vital bone, and here and there we might find the particles of HA, which, by the way, are not integrated to the bone because they are going to resolve as well. Another case, a large defect. If you want to do simultaneously implant placement with augmentation, as long as your implant will have a good primary stability, and it's a new implant, not an old one, it's not a perimplantitis case, you place a new implant, of course, then you can augment together Place the graft, place, press, close, and we close it. That's how it looks after 12 weeks. That is the radiographic appearance. First dates look like that. After 11 days, most of you are not familiar with this, might think that you don't have nothing here. Take a look after 11 weeks. This is from two different angles. It's completely different than what we are used to see when we work with granules. But at the reentry, this is bone. And here and there, we might find the particles, the big particles of HA. But most of the grafted site is the bone. And you can see it here as well in the, uh, in the CT scan. Now, lateral augmentation, it's a very challenging procedure with the conventional methods. Here you can see that the ridge is very narrow. But when you work with cement, it's become so easy. The only thing that you need is to respect the rules and make it simple as we show you here. Also, this case was treated by conventional methods and was failed. So we try to augment again by cements. We reflect the flap. You see, the ridge is very, very narrow. Of course, no implant can be placed. Now, releasing the flap at its base, but not too much. You see, the flap is with tension. <clears throat> Bond appetite. We push the piston until the first piston reach the blue line. We move the cap. 45 degrees angle and start ejecting the material on the bone. Press firmly, that's all. Now, you want to add, you can add another layer. Take a dry goes, press firmly, and you're done. Now you can close the flap. Less than a minute. Now, don't expect that it's going to be hard like a stone, but it's very stable. No membrane is used. You see, also here, there is a small gap. This is not tension-free. Three months post-op. Take a look at the bone that we have here. And at the re-entry, Any implant can be placed here. You see a white bone. 
And here and there, you can see the big particles of the HA. Now, we drill for the implant and we drill into bone. We don't drill into uh, granules. See the torque, see the efforts in order to place them in place. Now, of course, we could close it like this, but we wanted to go on the safe side and we place another layer on the buccal in order to have an even wider bone. Ejecting the material into the site. Press and close the flap. Extremely simple. This is the beauty of the system. So from one point of view, it's very easy, and the other point of view, it's give you the best results. <clears throat> we can use bond appetite as well for cases after failed implant, such as in this case, we eject the material inside, place, press, close, Three months later, this is the bone that we have here. That's how it looks before, and that's how it looks after three months. And of course, now I can place the implant, and if I need, I can re-augment a little bit. But from this case to another implant, I think it's quite impressive. Now the question is, can we do vertical augmentation in perimplantitis cases? One thing we need to remember, Due to the cement characteristics and cement behavior and the cement setting, it's a little bit elusive because we can place it vertically and it looks very nice. It stays in place. It's not like Ronald that it's moved everywhere. It stays in place, it's hard. And we might think that if we will close the flap, it will work for us, but it's not true. Because if it does not have at least one bony wall to support it, then during the healing there will be lateral movement on the graft and then we will lose the graft so vertical augmentation there are special techniques with a rigid barrier not uh, not um, not the titanium mesh with titanium foil this is completely different technique once of my webinars i will show specific techniques for vertical augmentation and definitely i'm not encouraging you to start with vertical augmentation until you don't uh, have enough confidence with the material. Perimplantitis cases, they are not predictable, no matter with what type of uh, material you are working. Sometimes you can have a nice results. Most of the times it's a failure. So I definitely not encourage you to use my material for perimplantitis. So to end my session, I would like to summarize the advantage that I see and I hope that you saw it as well with me. When we work with cement, it's extremely and easy handling and efficient graft to work with. And it reduces our chair time significantly from 15, 20 minutes into less than a minute. This is outstanding. Of course, optimal outcome because most of it is turned to the patient on bone. That's why it's reduced the healing time. We don't need to wait six months. We can wait just three months. And of course, we don't need to use membranes, so we reduce our costs. So I would like to thank you all for your attention. You can find us in www.augmabio.com. For those of you who have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My private email is amos, A-M-O-S, at augmabio.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook. We would love you to be our friend on Facebook, in LinkedIn, and of course, in YouTube. So thank you very much all. Okay, Amos, thank you. We have a couple of questions that came in. I'd also like to comment that the product is now available via the Blue Sky Bio website as well. So you can yeah. find it, you can find it there as well. Um, if there are additional questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box. Some questions have come in so far. Let's go ahead and I'll uh, read them out to you. One question that came in is, can this material be used in patients with BONJ? With? B-O-N-J. B-O-N, B-O-N-J. What is B-O-N-J? Um, yeah, excuse my 
on the topic. Bio plus funny associated ah, this was gonna, of the draw. This, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was when I this was when I I had I had in my life two cases of this was when I well, I can tell you something. When you have it, you are in a deep problem. So, personally, I prefer with people uh, with bisphosphonate to try not to do any surgical if I can and try to refer them to hospitals or something like that. Because if it gets, I mean, again, I mean, those that are injected are, uh, are uh, most, uh, most, uh, how do you say, most dangerous for us. The, um, those who take for osteoporosis, uh, this I do, I do augmentation, but uh, those who take iradia and all of those stuffs, I definitely prefer to, uh, to refer them to, to hospitals that they will treat them. But I personally try not to do any surgery on those types. Because okay, if the osteonecrosis starts, oh, you're in a big problem. Okay. Another question that came in, do you have any periosteal release for flap advancement? I don't like to make a, the, um, a periosteal relief for flap investment. I prefer, because I, you compromise a little bit the blood supplies, I prefer to cut at the base of the flap. And again, you don't need to cut too much. Just take your, uh, always take a new blade, 45 degrees angle, come to the base of the flap, and make a small cut, and with your uh, forceps, see how much you can you can uh, you can drag it. Yeah, you can you can pull it. Okay, and again, you don't need it to be tension free as we do with the granules and membranes, because with membranes you must have tension free. But when you do tension free first, yeah, you you are connecting the flap to the muscle that it uh, can be more flappy especially if you place it above the cement. So it must be with a moderate tension. So you don't need to release too much. Just enough that you think that uh, it will be closed or almost closed. Okay, next question. Can we use this material for sinus augmentation? Yes, of course. If, if you like, I can, uh, I can show some, uh, some video. Maybe we'll leave it to the end of, uh, just remind me, in the end of the webinar, I will go to YouTube and I will share with you one of the video about sinuses, how to work. Okay, I think we could go ahead and do that now while we're waiting. Ah, you want now? Room. Okay, we will, we will do it now, just a second. Any additional questions? Oh, like okay, so, so just a second, I will go now into YouTube. Meanwhile, let me comment again that the webinar attendees should complete the webinar attendance form. The link is in the chat box next to the video screen. It's where we could send you the CE credits. And again, that's usually sent within around a week after the webinar presentation. In the previous webinars that we've had in the 2017 Blue Sky Bio webinar series um, are available. The recordings are available. We must have had 12 or 15 presentations. The recordings are available via the Blue Sky Bio website and YouTube. Let's take a look here. This is a sinus lift with the external approach and there was a perforation in the sinus uh, Schneiderian uh, lining. Now if the perforation is less than four millimeters, we can use the 3D bond to close it. You see the perforation? Now 3D bond, as you can see, we provide you a cell line. This is not uh, with the smart syringe as uh, the bond appetite. Normally, I, I recommend to use the one CC 3D bond for such cases. Here, the doctor didn't have, so we use the half CC, but the one CC is much easier. You see, we eject the liquid, the, we eject the cell line inside until a small drops comes out, and then we push the piston to, uh, to eject the surplus of, uh, of cell line. Now, we eject it into the sides, take our spatula or elevator peristal with a little bit cell line and just start modeling it on the membrane. Take a dry gauze, place above and touch. And as you can see, you have a nice roof. Now, we introduce the bond appetite into the sinus. And 
and we condense it into the crest direction, not into the membrane direction. Again, condense it into the crest direction and then take a dry gauze, place above and press. Okay, here we press. And another layer to close the window. Press above and that's all. You're done, you can close the flap. Very simple. By the way, you see, this is the result. I can show you also here a very nice video that what happened if accidentally we made an, we made an extraction and during extraction we have a perforation, a huge perforation or smaller of the sinus, uh, of the sinus membrane. Just a second. Let's take a look here. You can see this is a huge perforation. We take the 3D bond, not the bond appetite, because the 3D bond will resolve completely. We just eject it into the site. Due to the inclination of the buccal plate and the palatal plate, it will not penetrate inside because the material will condense through itself. Press firmly and you're done. Now I can continue to augment. It's amazing. It's a very complex procedure that you can do it so, so quickly and so easily. Close the flap, primary closure. That's how it looks before. Three months post-op, you can see the bond that was formed, okay? I, I recommend all of you to, uh, to go, to, go to, uh, to YouTube, to Ogma Bio YouTube. I think also you have in your YouTube, in Blue Sky, we have uh, videos, how, the hands-on video and all of those things that might be very helpful for those who would like to implement the system. As well, um, you can find it also in my private YouTube, so all of those videos. Okay, a couple more questions that came in. Are you still making sure that you score the extraction site or cortical bone to get good bleeding? Decortication, it's something which is in debate between clinicians. Some say you must, some say you don't. I can tell you that I try both, and both works. In the lower jaw, I prefer to make the decortication because I'm used to. I'm not sure that there is a logical reason for that because I did some cases that works very nicely without it as well. But I do it. In the upper jaw, absolutely, I don't spend my time on decortication. You saw even in, the, in this case of the lateral augmentation, there was no decortication and you have a beautiful bone. Okay, can you bring your contact information back up on the screen, the last the slide that you had there? Yes, please. Just a second. Is the product available in Canada and is it Canada approved? And no, Canada? not yet, not yet. It's not available yet in Canada, but in the US it's, uh, it's available. 
Okay, and I think we'll wrap up with one final question. It's available, um, of course, in US and Europe because we have the C approval and the FDA, but in Canada, we don't have. Okay, so let's wrap up with one final question. How do you inject material for the crestal sinus lift? Can you explain and give some tips? Yeah, I think, I think it's better if I show you a video. Great. There is a different technique. Yeah, I will show you a video. Okay, I think we lost uh, Amos. Anyway, so I'll take this opportunity to wrap up the, the presentation. Thank everybody for attending. Go ahead and complete the webinar attendance form so we can send you the CE credit. And again, uh, past recordings of presentations are available via the Blue Sky Bio website or via YouTube. Enjoy the rest of your day.